Divinity Original Sin 2 is a game full of choices. You have to decide where to go, who to talk to, what to say, and whose house to ransack after you kill the owner and use a tool to rip their face off and create a mask for an undead creature. But, before getting into any of the real action, you'll have choices of a different sort to make. Mainly, what class to play. Much like its predecessor, Original Sin 2 lets you choose a pre-made character or completely customize one. It's important to realize that, no matter what decisions you make on the outset of your journey, you'll be able to reshape your character over the course of the game. You'll also at one point have the opportunity to rebuild your character from scratch if you regret your decisions. But that doesn't mean the choices you make at the start don't matter. Original Sin 2 can be a very difficult game from the get-go, and you'll want to make sure you have a capable character to play with. Choosing one of the default options and then modding it in the opening hours is a safer path than building one completely from scratch. So in this video, we're going to examine each of the default classes and potential skills you may want to substitute. Battle Mages are a solid blend of close-range melee combat and elemental damage. As to be expected from a class that isn't devoted to any one function, it doesn't excel in either category, but Battle Mages are all about versatility. By default, Battle Mages lack any ranged moves that keep them out of danger. Battering Rams puts you right in the middle of the action, and both Blind Radiance and Shocking Touch require you to be close to your targets. You can swap out Shocking Touch in favor of Electric Discharge or Bouncing Shield if you're desperate to be able to deal damage at a distance, but Battle Mages are best suited for being right in the thick of things. Cleric focuses on healing magic and close-range combat, and it uses the Restoration ability for a traditional healing spell. It relies on the Necromancer skills to deal damage and provide further healing, both for the Cleric and their allies. The Cleric is all about healing, so you'd be best off leaving the default skills as is. Conjurers rely on summoning to deal the bulk of their damage. While this does leave them with few options in terms of direct offense, the ability to provide additional targets to distract your enemies can be invaluable. Conjurers are best off sticking with the default set of skills. There is only one other choice, Farsight Infusion, which provides magic armor and a ranged attack for your summoned incarnate. But early on, this is not worth the trade-off of losing your ability to deal damage with Dimensional Bolt or the presence and damage of your totem, of which you can have more than one out at a time. Wizard is a traditional magic user with a focus on damage dealing. By default, you'll have Pyrokinetic and Geomancer skills, which combined well together. Use Fossil Strike to create an oil surface and then light it ablaze with Ignition. As an alternative, you can swap out Fossil Strike in favor of Contamination, which creates a poison surface that can still be combined with Ignition. Like the Wizard, the Enchanter is a straight magic user, but rather than focusing on pure damage dealing, they channel spells that affect enemies and the battlefield around them. Despite sounding relatively innocuous, Rain is one of the most useful spells in the game, as it can put out fires, which happens way more often than it should in battle. It also pairs well with the Enchanter's other spells, as making an opponent wet leaves them more susceptible to being shocked with a spell like Electric Discharge. Wet surfaces or enemies can also be frozen with Hail Strike. It's a very self-sustaining class and pairs with other classes well. Considering how important elemental effects are, the Enchanter is easily one of the best classes. Despite the name, fighters serve primarily as tanks. They start with more health, thanks to the plus two constitution, and come equipped with Fortify, which restores physical armor and ensures they aren't teleported away from their position on the front lines. Although tempting, you should likely keep both Warfare and Geomancer to start with, rather than investing in Retribution, which reflects a percentage of damage back at attackers. Inquisitors are similar to Battle Mages, in that they are a blend of close-range combat and elemental damage. However, Mosquito Swarm presents them with a way to deal damage from afar while Necromancer in general provides a means for self-sustaining, as they regain health as they deal damage directly to an enemy's health. Battering Ram is useful for getting into action, while Crippling Blow is a strong alternative thanks to its ability to do significant damage to nearby enemies. 
Knights are a more offensive-oriented version of the fighter, relying heavily on close-range damage. They need to be in the thick of things in order to deal damage, and you'll want to ensure you don't deviate from the default skills. The only alternative with the standard setup is Bouncing Shield, but Knights come with a point in two-handed weapons, meaning you shouldn't be using a shield. This is a textbook example of ensuring you're aware of what each aspect of your character involves in order to maximize their effectiveness. Metamorphs are among the most challenging classes to start out with. If you're new to the genre, you're likely better off trying something else first, as entertaining as Metamorph may sound. Chicken Claw is a powerful ability, but it's essential that you pick out the correct target, as it can only be used once every six turns. The only alternative skill available by default is Chameleon Cloak, which turns you invisible. The Ranger is a powerful mix of ranged physical and elemental damage. Their bow, or crossbow, lets them stay at a safe distance, which is important as you'll want to maintain high ground to take advantage of the bonus damage provided by Huntsmen. Rangers are versatile in terms of elemental damage, thanks to their ability to craft various types of elemental arrows. Alternatively, the Elemental Arrowheads skill provides a way to temporarily unleash a wide variety of elemental attacks, depending on what's nearby. If you're looking for additional healing, you can swap out one of the Huntsman skills in favor of First Aid. Additionally, it's important to note that ranged attacks in Divinity Original Sin 2 are much more reliable than in the first game. Don't let your experience with Original Sin scare you off from giving the Ranger a try. Now, if the idea of being a Ranger appeals to you, but you want even more flexibility, Wayfarer may be for you. Fossil Strike allows you to create an oil surface, and if you have fire nearby, elemental arrowheads can be used to ignite it and deal serious damage. Following up with the skill pinned down the following turn can allow you to ensure the enemy is stuck in the ensuing blaze. Or you can always swap it out in favor of first aid to provide your party with another source of healing. Rogues rely on stealth and mobility to get behind their opponents and backstab them to deal maximum damage. They're reliant on others to heal them and thus vulnerable if caught out of position. Rogues can be a challenge to play effectively, but if you decide to try it, be sure to leave the default skills alone. Chloroform, which puts the enemy to sleep, is tantalizing, but the three pre-selected options ensure you can maximize your damage and have the flexibility to get away. Shadow Blades are effectively spellcasting rogues, moving around quietly and backstabbing enemies while maintaining the freedom to turn an opponent into a chicken every now and then. Like rogues, they are challenging to play while lacking the additional health that rogues enjoy, but their plus two to wits ensures that they'll be able to act more often than most other characters. A short range spellcaster, which is deal heavy damage, but are potentially vulnerable. Their damage is also largely indirect. Outside of backstabbing foes, you'll need a dead body and some time to move a bloated corpse into position to explode. Positioning is incredibly important with witches, making this one of the more challenging classes to start out with. Remember to think about these skills when picking party members as well, although you won't be able to substitute skills for them, being stuck with the defaults. It's also important to remember that these classes are simply the starting base, and over time your character will grow and shift into their own unique snowflake that sucks up blood and grows wings. Now that you've crafted the perfect skeleton boy and are ready to play, why not check out our tips on things you need to do in the game's opening area, Fort Joy. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.